Good evening, Corpus Christi community. My name is Pat Brophy, and I am a Vice Principal at Corpus. My name is Karen Bullhauer, and I'm also a Vice Principal at Corpus. We are excited to welcome you to our virtual graduation ceremony for the class of 2020. We would like to begin by asking you to join us in the sign of our faith while we pray for our graduating students. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks and we praise you, even during these days of uncertainty and challenge. We have heard you say to the disciples time and again, do not be afraid. Let us hear you speak these words to us. We entrust the graduating class of 2020 to your care and mercy. Give them patience, diligence, and zeal to grow in their knowledge of themselves, this world, and you. As these young men and women transition out of our community and into a world with so many unknowns, may you be a rock of certainty for them. Give them hope and faith now and tomorrow. Remind them of your love, of all they are, and of their great dignity. Remind us of our pride in them, and may they know your protection and peace. Bless them and their families, and bless all the students, families, teachers, support staff, and administrators in the Corpus Christi family. We ask this in your name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is with great pleasure that I now introduce a member of our graduation class, Kiara Bailey, and invite her to lead us in the National Anthem. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love, in all thy sons command, with glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Oh family and friends and staff of Corpus Christi Catholic High School. I greet you today from the foyer of St. Paul the Apostle Parish as I stand here beside the statue of St. Paul. And as we come to this day, as you mark your graduation from high school, I just like to reflect on St. Paul and his reality, his role in the church as an example maybe of someone to follow as you come to the end of your high school days. Because who was St. Paul? St. Paul, in his day, was a privileged member of his society. He was well-educated, he was traveled, and he was a Roman citizen. As a Roman citizen, he had rights and privileges that a lot of other people did not have. And so he had a real privileged position in his society, in the world in which he lived. But then the Lord Jesus called him. On the road to Damascus, he was struck with a vision, and in that vision he was thrown to the ground and made blind. When he rose, he was led to Damascus where he encountered the first Christian community, and the path for his life changed radically. It became a very different path. He was called by the Lord to evangelize, to spread the gospel, to journey throughout the Roman Empire, founding Christian communities, founding churches. And ultimately, St. Paul had to suffer for the Lord Jesus. We come in these days of the pandemic, um, and you're not able to gather with your family and friends, with your teachers, to celebrate your graduation, to celebrate this momentous milestone in your life. But the Lord is still calling you to serve him. The Lord is still calling you 
to journey with him, and to journey in a very, very different way, to journey with great confidence in God's mercy and grace during these troubled days, not only in the days of the pandemic, but also as we see what's going on in the United States with the protests against racism. We see a certain glue in our society kind of falling apart, and these are very difficult and troubling days. But again, to go forward with hope, trust, and acknowledging that the Lord God will be with us. As I speak to you today, this is the first week of June, and we just finished the Easter season. During the Easter season, our reading for Mass, the first reading for Mass, most often comes from the Acts of the Apostles. The Acts of the Apostles speaks of the life of the early church. It follows the life of Peter and the other apostles, and the later half of the Acts speaks about St. Paul principally. The Acts of the Apostles ends with St. Paul coming to Rome. And it says that despite the fact that he is under arrest and imprisoned, that he is not impeded in his work. He's not impeded in announcing the good news, announcing and spreading the gospel of Jesus. He's not impeded in his work as a preacher. But we know what happened to St. Paul in Rome. He was imprisoned. He was tortured. He was martyred. He died for the Lord Jesus. In a certain sense, we can say that the writer of the Acts of the Apostles maybe lied to us a little bit. He was impeded, but not his mission. His mission was still there despite what he had to go through. Prison, torture, and martyrdom. Despite those things, his work was concluded. What God asked him to do was done. So, my dear young people, have courage. That despite the fact that you have to go through a certain amount of suffering, pain, and anguish, that your work will not be impeded. Have hope that your mission can be accomplished no matter what. The Lord is with you, and St. Paul can give us an example. May he pray for us. I'd just like to kind of conclude today with um, a prayer, the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi, in which he, St. Francis asked the Lord to be with him, that despite, shall we say, the negative things, that we can always be a positive influence. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. My dear friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you, and show, his, show you his mercy. May he turn his countenance towards you and give you his peace. And may Almighty God bless you and keep you always, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless everyone. Congratulations to the class of 2020. You made it. It will certainly be a year to remember. And even though you benefited from many prayers, reflections, testimonies at our school, I encourage you to keep discovering the presence of God in your lives, no matter what others say or think. Finding God in your life means becoming more fully yourself, becoming what Lord wished to create and not photocopying somebody else. You are precious. And the mark you leave at our Corpus Christi school community is unique because God has created you unique. As you start 
your own life path. May the Holy Spirit guide you safe. May you always find the presence of God in whatever you do. Amen. Congratulations once again. Good evening, Corpus Christi Class of 2020. I appreciate the opportunity to say a few words to you tonight. To our parents and guardians, thank you for entrusting your sons and daughters to our care here at Corpus for the last four or five years. Whether they've been here for their whole high school career or just the last semester, the support that you've provided to them and to the school has been instrumental in getting them to this point. To our staff here at Corpus, I wanna sincerely thank you for your hard work and dedication to our students. Particularly this year in a very challenging environment, you've been able to maintain a level of excellence in Catholic education for which this school has become known. And finally, to our graduates. In a year that's been like no other, you've continually demonstrated excellence in academics, on the athletic field, and in the love and care you've shown within your community and to the broader Halton community. So I'd like to thank you and congratulate you for that. For the last number of years, you've really had to rely on your parents and your teachers. In the future, we need to rely on you. So I encourage you to continue to show love and care for your community, for your friends, for your coworkers, for your families. I wish you all the best in the future. Congratulations and God bless you. Hello, class of 2020. On behalf of the Halton Catholic District School Board and our Board of Trustees, it is my absolute pleasure to extend our sincere congratulations to each of you on your graduation from Corpus Christi Catholic Secondary School. Tonight, we rejoice in this significant milestone with each of our graduates. Although I would love to have been celebrating this important milestone with you in person, I feel very honored to be able to join you virtually. I want to begin by extending a special acknowledgement to the parents, principals, teachers, and members of our parish communities who have played an instrumental role in assisting our students along their journey so far. Can you believe that you are all here again with another amazing graduating class? Time really does fly so much faster than any of us truly realize. To our graduates, we are also proud of the model that each of you provides, not only to your peers, but to all members of our Catholic school community and beyond. This has been an extraordinary year, to put it mildly. While the social distancing and the school closures have been hard on very many people in our community, I think it would be fair to say that this period of time has been especially challenging and honestly disappointing for some, if not all, of our grade 12 students. You have had to forego many of the celebrations, trips, and other activities that were planned to commemorate this important milestone in your life. And yet here you are. This may not look or feel like the celebration that you had envisioned, but rest assured, it is a well-deserved celebration. As a graduate of the class of 2020, you will forever be remembered and celebrated for your perseverance in the face of adversity and for the hope you ignited during a period of so much uncertainty. Your resiliency in the face of such adversity is a testament to the adults you are becoming. As Catholic school graduates, you exemplify the aspirations we hold of our students the same aspirations that Jesus holds for each of us, that we be discerning believers, effective communicators, reflective, creative, and holistic thinkers, self-directed, responsible, and lifelong learners, collaborative contributors, caring family members, and responsible citizens. As you look forward with a sense of excitement to the opportunities that lie ahead for you, remember always with pride that you are a Catholic school graduate. And wherever your path may lead you, may you always continue to use your God-given talents to accomplish great things. As I leave you with my heartfelt best wishes for your exciting new and unknown journey ahead, I wanted to share this quote from Michelle Obama. You may not always have a comfortable life and you will not always be able to solve all of the world's problems at once, but don't ever underestimate the importance you can have because history has shown us that courage can be contagious and hope can take on a life of its own. Congratulations, class of 2020, and go Longhorns. Good evening and welcome. 
It is with great pleasure that I address the Corpus Christi graduating class of 2020. I would like to thank Pat Daly, Director of Education, Colin McGillicuddy, Superintendent of the Corpus Christi Family of Schools, Vince Ion Tomasi, Chair of the Board, and Burlington Trustees Brenda Agnew and Tim O'Brien. I would also like to thank the co-chairs of our Catholic School Council, George Puthin Kulam and Lisa Shannon. Your dedication to the students, staff, and parents in our community is greatly appreciated. Catholic education is built on a relationship between parish, school, and home. It is with this in mind that I would like to send my thanks and appreciation to our school chaplain, Father Andrea Petrosen, and to the pastor of St. Paul the Apostle Parish, Father Ed Henhofer. To the Corpus Christi Catholic Secondary School staff, thank you for your hard work, for your passion, and for your commitment to our students. And thank you for inspiring and motivating each and every one of them to reach their full God-given potential. In particular, I would like to note that one of our staff members has reached an amazing milestone of her own this year, that wonderful thing called retirement. We wish Mrs. Catherine O'Brien all the best in years to come after a long and rewarding career in education. I would also like to acknowledge a recent loss in our community. Joe Regani was a humble hero in our school. His calm composure in the face of the struggles of staff and students was both admirable and comforting. To the parents, guardians, and families of our graduates, Congratulations and thank you for working in partnership with our school staff and for the time and energy you have spent helping each of our graduates, your children, in striving for the excellence they so clearly demonstrate. I would also like to extend a greeting to my administrative team, teaching staff, support staff, parents, guardians, family, and friends joining us this evening. And finally, a very special welcome to our grade 12 students who are now officially the graduating class of 2020. This is a graduating class and a year that I will never forget. In September, I began my first year as principal in a new school, much the same way I began my first year of teaching, filled with hope and anticipation, eager to start a new chapter and excited to meet a new group of students. I quickly learned that the grade 12 students at Corpus Christi were also filled with hope and anticipation, eager to embark on their last year of high school and to make it a memorable one. In September, none of us could possibly have predicted just how memorable it would be. Together, we experienced teacher job action, a global pandemic, and most recently, the world's reaction to systemic racism. But let's not forget that we also experienced a few amazing floodlight football games, a pretty awesome dance, karaoke challenges in the calf, and together we made a difference in the lives of those in need within our community. While these things may seem small in light of our global situation, I ask that you always remember that it is the small acts that make a big difference in the lives of those you touch. As Catholic school educators, your teachers, support staff, and administration are mindful that we are sending you out into an ever-changing world, equipped with the Catholic graduate expectations that have been infused in your lessons since you began as a student with the Halton Catholic District School Board. We pray that as you leave Corpus Christi, you enter the larger world as a discerning believer, an effective communicator, a reflective, creative and holistic thinker, a self-directed, responsible, lifelong learner, a collaborative contributor, a caring family member, and a responsible citizen. We pray that we have prepared you for the future and for all it has to offer. Over your four years as a Longhorn, you came together as a community to give gratitude for successes and you came together as a community to pray through tragedy and loss. Corpus Christi offered you opportunities for academic, emotional, physical, and spiritual growth, both in the classroom and beyond. It is these experiences, along with the curriculum and rich classroom discussions that have contributed to your development 
as understanding and inclusive young adults. I imagine you've spent a few moments recently reflecting on your time at Corpus Christi, and it is my hope that the experiences here have been positive and have left you feeling confident and prepared to take on new challenges. I pray that you continue to be supported in your faith journey and that you celebrate a sense of achievement as you receive your certificate or diploma. As Maya Angelou has written, people may not remember exactly what you did or what you said, but they will always remember how you made them feel. As you leave Corpus Christi, I feel confident saying that you will likely not remember exactly what was said or what was done, but you will remember how it felt to be a student here and you will remember how it felt to be a Longhorn. I remember the very first time I addressed the student body at Corpus, and I spoke about what it meant to be a Longhorn. You may recall that I said Longhorns are known for their diverse coloring, that they are tough, that they are strong, that they are self-sufficient, and that they travel long distances together. I would argue that the graduates of the class of 2020 embody all these qualities. Though it may be time to leave the herd after the long distance you have traveled together, you are now and always will be a Longhorn. Just like the Longhorn, may you embrace diversity. May you be strong. May you be gentle. May you be courageous. May you be loyal. May you meet life's adventures with a clear mind and a bold heart. No matter where you go or what you do, may you always remember that you are part of the Corpus Christi family. Congratulations, class of 2020. Hook 'em horns. Good evening, friends, trustees, our family of schools, Superintendent Colin McGillicuddy, Corpus Christi School Council representatives, our principal, Mrs. Morrow, our vice principal, Ms. Bullhauer, vice principal, Mr. Brophy, Father Andre, Corpus Christi staff, parents, family members, and most importantly, our fellow graduates of 2020. Woohoo! Can you believe it? We made it. We graduated. Today marks the exceedingly important day of our senior graduation. It marks the day our teenage experiences come to a memorable end and it symbolizes the greatest moments of our high school chapter finally coming to an extraordinary close. But the thing is, high school wasn't just composed of one chapter. Instead, it was a book with many different components, each chapter featuring a story that we wrote individually. Good times, bad times, and times none of us could ever have imagined happening. But without conflict in a story, there would be no plot. You see, each chapter of our high school experience has looked different, but has ultimately contributed to our spectacular finale and has brought us even closer together as a graduating class. Looking back on the past four years of high school, every single one of our chapters was a memorable one. Because that's who we are, class of 2020. We are memorable. And memorable is a word you never forget. I remember seeing many of you at our grade nine orientation. We all were given those burnt orange and white t-shirts as we walked through the door, truly feeling like a Longhorn for the first time. Soon to be grade nine girls excited to walk the intimidating hallways of Corpus Christi, and soon to be grade nine boys who were way too excited to use every last drop of their Axe Cologne, thinking it was some sort of girl magnet. I think they took the saying opposites attract way too literally. Thinking about orientation seems as if it was a lifetime ago as we all have come so far and have grown so much since then. The funny thing is, despite change, growth, and all these times of uncertainty, the one thing I know for sure is that we first walked into Corpus's doors the same way we walked out of them, together. And together is a beautiful place to be. You see, graduation is a significant milestone in all of our lives. It is a time of celebration, commemoration, and it is a time of excitement for our future ahead. But before we move forward and take that first step into our new adult lives, let's take a trip down memory lane into the wondrous chapters of our high school storybook, The Longhorns of 2020. And don't worry, there are no fees, prerequisites, or final averages required. Chapter 1. Let the journey begin. We were in grade 9 and about to embark on a four-year journey adventure that was full of new experiences, new challenges, and lots of firsts. 
Our first challenge was finding our classrooms, and our first experience was walking into the wrong one. Or at least that's how it went for me. Our first floodlight where we learned having school spirit was way more important than staying warm. Our first semi-formal that we look back on and say, what on earth was I wearing? Our first picture day, our first picture retake day, and now our first time together as the class of 2020. All great times that we cherish together. You know, there's a picture of us hanging in our school in ninth grade that says in big orange letters, class of 2020. Well, they say a picture is worth a thousand words, but I think that picture is worth a million because each and every one of you are one in a million. On to chapter two, Longhorns, take the wheel. Our grade 10 selves were getting the hang of this high school thing. We had one year seniority, we became VIP members at Tim Hortons during lunch, and the school dance moves were finally getting better. However, I think if there was one specific thing I can remember about grade 10, it wasn't actually a thing at all. Instead, it was one specific question. Did you get your G1 yet? I swear, you give a teenager a little bit of freedom to put their hands on a steering wheel, oh boy, they'll take it right away. But learning to drive a car was not just an exciting moment in our teenage lives, but it was us moving one step closer to becoming the leaders of our adult ones. Grade 10 had us in a place where we were truly setting the GPS course for our life ahead. Navigating our way through grade 10 biology with a frog dissection that seemed to last forever. Navigating our way into the haunted houses during Halloween where high-pitched screams could be heard from afar. And navigating our way through Corpus hallways all wearing the trendy fashion of Corpus Christi's uniform. Let me just say, we are one attractive class. Whether we knew it or not, placing our hands at 10 and 2 on the steering wheel was us preparing to steer our ways into the people we are today. After all, in life there will always be bumpy roads ahead. But if we keep that seatbelt buckled in and stay focused and determined, I have no doubt that we will reach our final destination. Deep in the heart of the Corpus Jungle titles Chapter 3 of our Corpus Christi novel. We were in grade 11. We were the juniors of the school, and we were living our high school life to the fullest. Some people worried about marks now showing up on their transcript, and other people worried about marks still showing up in their parents' email. But grade 11 was not just about the marks in academics. It was about friends and personal growth. It was about silly little things we did as juniors and we'll look back on and laugh about. It was a year of Holton and Officer Champions making Longhorn Nation proud. Alpine, volleyball, soccer, football, basketball, baseball, lacrosse, track, whoa, you name it, we are champions. It was about the artistic touch of musical talent and visual art expertise that always captivated our eyes when we walked down that hallway. High school was about you. It was about me, and it was about us. And every single one of us will always be a part of the Corpus Christi jungle. Before I move on to our final and most exciting chapter, I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone who truly made our high school narrative possible. Our achievements, whether they were academic or not, wouldn't have been possible without the teachers who offered a helping hand, support, and guidance. Teachers, your work truly went far beyond the textbook as you all offered us security, direction, friendship, and your constant faith within us. Just as Jesus taught his disciples to have strong faith throughout their lives, our teachers have taught us to have strong faith in our dreams and always inspire us to keep moving forward. They have also inspired me to follow my dreams of becoming a teacher in hopes of sharing the same motivation with my future students. Our storybook would also not have been possible without our brilliant parents, guardians, and families who continue to believe in our goals and dreams. They are the people who have stood by us during these past four years, always offering a caring hand in times of need. Their endless love has made us all into the individuals we are today, and they have truly embodied the definition of what it means to be amazing supporters. That being said, I'd like to say a special thank you to my mom and dad, Antonio and Susanna. I am so grateful for everything you have taught me, and I will continue to cherish you as my parents forever and always. Once again, thank you everyone. You are all truly magnificent. Lastly, but not least, we have made it to our victorious final chapter of our high school storybook, Chapter 4, Longhorns, take it home for the win. And man, what a year it was. 
Two floodlight football games where Corpus Christi's winning streak was not broken once, and we stood by it all. We cheered, we chanted, we came in full Corpus spirit. We bleed orange and white, we bleed victory. Man, those boys were so determined that I think they even made Tom Brady look bad. Well, now that I'm thinking about it, the football team even walked around in bubblegum bank heels for an entire day. Wow, Kim Kardashian's got nothing on them. During the Christmas season, our most fabulous Longhorn talent was displayed in our C4 Winter Talent Show, which was hosted by four of Corpus's most adored senior boys. Suits, candy canes, and cheesy jokes never went together so nicely as they did on that stage. Speaking of talent, we watched many karaoke performances in our cafeteria during lunches that truly captured the attention of everyone. I mean, I'm no expert, but I'm sure Simon Cowell would say, it's a yes for me. We had amazing events run by our very own student council and AV teams. We finally ex experienced having prime dominance over the student parking lot. <sighs> However, grade 12 was also full of our post-secondary stresses. Logarithmic functions, quantum physics, organic chemistry, and for all you bio people, what on earth is a Calvin cycle? The only Calvin I know is Klein. Now we are here. And look how far we have come. No one could ever have predicted that March 13th, 2020, the last Friday before March break, would be the last time we set foot on Corpus's ground as a senior student, and more importantly, as a graduate of 2020. This was a plot twist in our storybook that not even us as the authors saw coming. But just like books, life itself was made to have plot twists. It doesn't matter what story you are writing for yourself, life happens. It's inevitable. But the class of 2020 does not fall down when these times of challenge occur. We rise up with our spirit, with our strength, and with our tenacity. Although our grade 12 year got cut a little short, we still have had the most amazing high school experience. But our experience has been one that will forever stand out from the rest. But that's just like our grade. We stand out. Regardless of the way we are graduating, where we will be next year, or what our lives will look like for the next little while, we are resilient. We are brave. I know this because I know us. We don't wait for opportunities to happen. We create them. We don't tell people our dreams. We show them. We see impossible as possible. And we got that longhorn hustle. As I bring this address to a close, I must say that I've never been someone who liked endings. The last day of a great summer, the last bite of chocolate cake, and now the closing chapter to our high school storybook we cherish so much. But this isn't goodbye, and this isn't our ending. This is a beginning, a beginning to our future. While this great tale chapter is coming to a close, you are not done writing. This party, part of the story is told, but you are not done telling. I truly cherish the moments we have all spent together, and I will keep them near and dear to my heart. I wish all of you the most brilliant futures and the most magnificent lives. Now go, pick up a pencil and begin writing your sequel. A new story that features so many more amazing chapters full of more amazing memories. Because that's who we are, class of 2020. We are memorable. And memorable, it's a word you never forget. Thank you so much.